What's going on, everybody? This is Nick Lawson from Squad Sports. We're really excited to be supporting the Free Agent Friday series. A lot of great talent out there. Without further ado, this is the next free agent you should be signing with your sports team. All right, we're back for another Free Agent Friday, and today I've got Catherine Rowe with me. How's it going, Catherine? Pretty well. How are you? Doing good. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, no appreciate it. Let's get started with your um, school school background. Where'd you go to school? Any degrees? Yeah, so um, I went to Clark University in Worcester, Massachusetts uh, for undergrad, graduated in 2011, and then um, just graduated from the University of Texas uh, Macomb School of Business MBA program in May. Um, I'm actually doing an, another master's now um, in sports law at Arizona State um, while I'm kind of, you know, looking around for different positions. So a second MBA? Uh, it's it's a master's of legal studies. Okay. Um, okay. So, yeah, it's just with the extra time I have, I've been uh, starting that and working through it. And now's a good time to just get as much education as you can. I mean, it, it can't hurt. That's for sure. Yeah, for sure. And, and luckily with the GI Bill, there's a lot of opportunity. So I've been able to kind of do that. So tell us about that about GI yeah. and your experience in the military? Yeah, so I went to college um, for four years, played field hockey, and during that time um, also did Army ROTC, which is a commissioning service for uh, military officers. Um, so graduated and uh, was uh, commissioned into the, to be an officer in the Army. Um, my role was uh, telecommunications, which I majored in political science, so it was a bit of a learning curve for me. Um, but <laughs> over kind of the next seven years, um, my role was to be the telecommunications manager and expert um, for a couple different types of units, um, ranging from like supporting 30,000 people to more on a tactical level of 500 people. Um, so the role definitely looked different depending on where I was. Um, and throughout those roles typically had between like 15 to 40 people that I was in charge of. Wow. And then, so how many years yeah. were you in service? Uh, seven. Nice. Yeah. Well, thank you I'm, for your service. Number one. I mean, I, <laughs> oh, I commend you for that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, my pleasure. Um, and then I hit a point at about uh, like six, uh, six years where I made the decision that um, I was kind of ready to do something different. Um, and so I was deployed to Korea at the time um, and started looking at my options after school. Okay. And what made you kind of want to get into the sports side of things? Yeah. So um, I grew up as an army kid and everywhere I moved, sports were kind of like the home that when you're the new kid, you meet new friends. Um, and that thread kind of occurred. I mean, I moved 17 times before I was 18. So a bunch of different schools, got to be the new kid. Um, and then really as that carried on, like on deployments or training, um, sports were always kind of our thing to escape. Uh, so my soldiers and I would like joke around about different teams and they would make fun of me, I would make fun of them. Um, so sports has always kind of been that thread for me. And really as I started going to business school full-time, um, realized that there was a career path that I could potentially go into based off kind of my my background and then um, you know my interest. So how about when, when you were in school or or even you know during service did you do any internships or any other volunteer work? Um, so when I was in the army I really couldn't um, pretty was pretty busy. Um, I wish I would have like looking back but um, also don't remember exactly what it was like every day so try to like forget <laughs> that. Um, but then, uh, yeah, during school, um, I tried to take just an advantage of University of Texas and the brand, um, and Austin kind of being really forward in the tech space. So I worked at a startup called Home Run Dugout, which was at um, the Astros AAA affiliate, um, the Round Rock Express. Um, and that is like augmented reality uh, baseball. So if you think like, uh, you know, kind of like Top Golf, but instead of a big field you have a screen and it looks like a ballpark um, and the ball pops up from the ground it's a pretty cool uh, feature it's been on sports center a few times <laughs> so was working on kind of like helping them launch that new uh, new their kind of their startup from scratch there 
And then uh, last summer, I took more of a traditional uh, MBA business school kind of internship at Dell um, just to get some corporate experience. And then over the last year, um, I interned with the athletic department at Texas, uh, where I started kind of working in ticket sales. Um, but my director at the time, he uh, kind of allowed me to use some of the data and start working on kind of more of analytics and strategy work for them. So experience mapping, um, <clears throat> uh, like persona building, um, just efficiency type stuff. And then at the same time, I also was a research assistant for an MBA analyst at ESPN, uh, Kirk Goldsberry, um, who previously worked at the Spurs, Grantland, and um, is actually a PhD in geography, but he kind of made his brand in sports by um, using visualizations to show like kind of a so what of where people shoot or score from. Um, so currently working for ESPN now. Nice. So what's kind of the ideal role that you're most interested in? Yeah, so um, really like strategy and analytics. So um, I, I kind of come from more of a management leadership experience and like a, a, a technical thing. And one thing I always had to do in the army was be a technical bridge. And so it made me skillful at being able to kind of translate, you know, if someone's a sales leader or a marketing leader, being able to explain to them the data and what's the so what and understanding kind of what their shoes look like and what they can use. Um, so my goal is to get into like, you know, strategy and analytics, uh, on the business side or the performance side, because I think, um, I've been really lucky to have such a diverse set of experiences that I can kind of plug in in, in different places. So you can take all that data and dumb it down for someone like me to understand. Is that, <laughs> I wouldn't say, uh, dumb it down. I would just, uh, <laughs> like, I, I think my experiences during school, just like getting to work in marketing or getting to work in sales for a little bit, like the light bulb kind of goes on, uh, comes on for me and how to translate that to something that's actually like useful. Cause I think a lot of times you can have like analysis paralysis or use data in a way so that's much data, yeah. helpful. Um, but I try to really like, what's the, so what, why does it matter to you? What can it do to make you kind of better as whether it's like sales leader, marketing um, or strategy person? That's good. Yeah. I mean, that's, I need somebody like you to break it down for me. So I'm not that smart. <laughs> uh, so what would you say is your biggest um, asset or skill that you'll bring to a new position? Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, obviously I have some technical skills, but I really think it's my ability to communicate to different types of people. And I really, um, I pulled that a lot from growing up being a new kid and having to meet new people all the time. Um, but also just my experience in the army working with such a diverse set of people from all over. I really had the opportunity to, to learn how to communicate the why to just about anyone. Um, and I've taken that now into more of like the business world as well as sports and, and knowing how to use those interpersonal skills to kind of, like I said, not make people feel, feel dumb, but just show them <laughs> the way that uh, something can, can be useful to them. What's the, um, flip side what do you need to work on the most um i would say like the biggest thing that you know it's taken me a lot of time but just coming from like a different type of background um just my like sometimes imposter syndrome flares up and it makes me you know not necessarily think that in, in a confident way um and it's it's really interesting because sometimes i'm totally like i belong here and i'm confident and i know that i have the experience and the work that proves me able to do it but other times i have my moments where i'm like wow, all these other people have worked in sports for eight years. They don't necessarily think that, or they don't, you know, they don't really know what to make of my experience. And I start kind of telling myself these things. And so um, I would say like, I've definitely gotten past that in most cases, but there's definitely times that it, it flares up. And then I think really just domain knowledge. So obviously um, from, you know, my experience, I've tried to become like an encyclopedia on sports business and learn as much as I can, but there's only so much you can learn from. Uh, you know, internships or kind of more uh, higher level professional, like assistant work and stuff like that. You know, when you, when you actually work on, at a team, you can definitely pick up different norms and things like that, which I just haven't had beyond uh, Texas athletics. Well, the good thing though, too, is your, your skill set. there's a lot of crossover. I mean, it might look weird on the resume at first, as far as, you know, but I mean, there's so many core values and core 
um, skills that definitely transfer over. So, and, you know, just being an athlete in general, you know, um, I think definitely helps. So. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think there's a lot in common between uh, veterans and athletes, but also just like um, the hustle that comes from being in the army and supporting like a very high performing organization. It translates very well in my mind, obviously. And I think one of the biggest challenges for vets is us having to really break it down in a way and having that domain knowledge to be able to explain what you're doing in a, in a context of either, you know, sports or whatever industry you're looking at. How would you define success? Yeah. So success for me is um, like, obviously, you know, having moments where, you know, like for instance, I got into like the business school that I wanted to go to and worked really hard for that, but um, also bringing the people that worked with me uh, to it. So throughout the army, like we were very successful in my last two years, we were probably one of the best, um, I guess, uh, groups in, in uh, South Korea where we were deployed. Um, and, but if my, like, you know, all that's great, but if my soldiers were unhappy or a lot of them were, you know, low morale or they didn't feel like they were part of that, then, you know, that's not really success to me as a person or a leader. And so I always try to like, not only do things for myself, but also bring the people around me or, you know, any other veteran that wants to work in sports or whatever to help them. And that will make me feel, you know, the most successful. Are you open to relocation? Yeah, I'm pretty flexible. Um, you know, I'm, I'm on the East Coast now, but I uh, have moved around quite a bit. Uh, I have, I guess. Some, you tired some of moving? I would love or... to. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, it was definitely hard to leave Austin for, for a little bit um, just because I spent, you know, the longest chunk of my life really in Central Texas over the last four years. Um, but no, I'm pretty open. Uh, for me, it's, if, you know, I can make most things work because I didn't have much choice, I guess, growing up and uh, throughout my career. I'm going to have to have you talk to my son because he uh, he's in high school. I mean, we've we've moved, you know, not not quite that many times, but we've you know, we've bounced around uh, for my career. And uh, so I definitely I'm sure it takes a toll. But I think it also creates some some good skills. Um and, you know, I can tell from talking to you. Um, yeah, he, he probably doesn't like it now, and I didn't either. But, um, like, now looking back, like, it, it really helps, like, you understand how to talk to people and, mm -hmm. you know, go with the punches sometimes, too, like, being adaptable. You know, we talk about, like, the last six months. I've definitely had my moments, but um, I think everybody has. Yeah. But, uh, like, trying to just kind of pivot quickly and things like that, that's stuff that you kind of learn from having to do that growing up. Yeah. What would be a fun personal fact about you? Oh, yeah. Um, well, so my family has like a lineage of service dating back to the Revolutionary War. Um, so okay. um, like one of my I guess, ancestors at this point uh, was one of George Washington's messengers. And, every, and someone in my army has pretty much served through every major conflict in the U.S. Um, so I think this idea of like selfless service is just really part of our, our family's life. And like when I said, defining success, it's like, yeah, you can be successful, but who are you bringing with you? Um, so I'd say that's like the most beyond the whole, I've moved a lot of times. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> that's, that's, uh, and, um, yeah, I mean, I have a golden retriever, so that's another fun fact, I guess. So, um, with the, within the military, so was it just kind of something like, you know, you grew up around that and was it just like, this is what I'm, you know, did you know you were going to do that at an early age as well? Or did that kind of just pop up afterwards? Yeah. So when I first graduated college, I didn't want to do ROTC, um, I went to a school, a small school in Missouri, and actually tore my ACL. And I moved. Oh, sorry, my dog's actually moving the seat. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah. So I went to a school in, in Missouri for about six months. Got recruited to play there, and then I tore my ACL. And I moved back to my parents because just the way that um, it was easier to, to get through uh, an injury like that. And um, one thing I guess I never picked up maybe throughout high school was just this like burning desire to serve and. I would go back to my freshman year of high school. Um, my dad was 
um, having to attend, oh, it was like 2003, 2004, so really the height of, um, you know, the Iraq invasion and things like that. And my dad had had to go to a lot of funerals um, for soldiers that had passed away. And I remember one weekend, he was like, I'm going to, I have to go to the funeral and I'm going to uh, this woman who was a helicopter pilot. She was the first woman uh, helicopter pilot to get killed in Iraq and took me and she was actually a college athlete um and she had passed away and I I remember just like always having that in the back of my mind um and how transformative that was for me uh so really going into college at first I didn't really want to do it but as I came home and I was like reflecting on my next steps um you know felt like this this passion to serve and have no regrets um and and also when I talked about the GI Bill like the benefits of service for education or just, you know, going to a college that costs a lot of money and, and getting it paid for, you know, that's huge. And having a job um, when I graduated 2011, so right after the, the recession, coming back and having a job right after college made things really, I guess, easier. Um, <laughs> I, w- I would say like the time, you know, sometimes it's really tough for, for six or seven years, but then you also unlock like graduate school and other stuff that you can get from the GF bill. So it, it's, it's a good program to keep us in school. Yeah. Well, no, I, thanks again for your service. I mean, I, I, it's a lot of dedication and, and sacrifice and, you know, so I, I appreciate it. I, um, I don't know if I could do it, you know, so I, I definitely appreciate, um, you know, you and, and the rest of the people who serve. So. Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, we, we definitely appreciate it. Like my family, at least, you know, is kind of like our pleasure, I guess, you know, it's something that's been important to us for a long time. That's awesome. Well, I'm going to follow you in your career here. I'm, I, I'm sure you're going to, you know, latch on somewhere here, um, you know, soon things are starting to kind of slowly progress back. So uh, it's going to be fun to watch, um, you know, the next part of your, your journey. So thanks for joining me. And uh, like I said, anything I can do to help, just let me know. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I really, really appreciate it.